fantastic career, as we said. We'll see what he can do. Hopefully, he breaks this record. But moving on, we forgot about it last week. Transfers. And uh, Ewan flagged up this one, a very interesting one. Danny Martinez, we know he's arguably the best Colombian cyclist on the World Tour right now. And uh, he's been rumoured to Bora Hansgrohe. Quite an interesting move, to say the least. And more talent leaving Ineos Grandes. When I kind of was told this by you, and I was like, actually, that's kind of a pretty cool move, to be honest with you. But then you start to think about, you know, does it make... It's a good move in terms of high-caliber rider going to a place where he'll more than likely get more opportunities. But then you think, oh, well, realistically, does this make sense? I feel like it does. Although Bora definitely seemed to have, you know, Jai Hindley as their main man because he has won them a grand tour. So he's clearly got for priority. Whereas Martinez, aside from that Egan Bernal victory at the Giro d'Italia, you know, has he shown the form over three weeks to be a grand tour contender? I don't really think so but is that just because he hasn't actually been given the opportunity to do so has he always just been a helper if he was given the full support would he actually be better off so i feel like there's still a lot of unknowns there but in theory he's got the tt which it's not as good as a finger guys or a piaches but it's good enough where it's still very competitive and that's vital as a GC leader nowadays. They do also have like a Vlasov and a Hindley. So I guess Martinez makes sense as a third GC rider in terms of sending one to each Grand Tour. But then they've also got like Bennett in there, Kemner if he wants to keep on pursuing this GC thing. I think that it does just about make sense for Bora to be pursuing Danny Martinez. And I think from a Danny Martinez point of view, it does make sense probably to leave because I feel like Ineos don't really seem to utilize him to his best abilities. I'm not really sure how he's, you know, the season I remember is like he's won Algarve, but he hasn't really been hitting the mark anywhere else. So I think it's a cool move. I think that it'll be a, an interesting one if it does happen. I'll be interested to see what he can do at a grand tour, to be honest with you. That's the main thing which I'm curious about. But do you guys think it makes sense? Yeah, I mean, it definitely makes sense. Bora have been looking to bolster their GC lineup for a while, but this is another really good one-week-long rider. Him, Iyita as well, another good one-week-long rider who's won a UCI World Tour stage race in his well, in the past two years whilst riding for Bora. Sasha Vlasov's a great one-week-long rider. He's a good at GC as well, normally, when he doesn't have COVID. We definitely have many bases covered. Where does Emu Buchmann and Kemner sit into this? We don't really know, but it's definitely showing that Bora want to diversify their GC portfolio once again. What does this mean for the sprinting segment of the team? We don't quite know because I would imagine Martinez will be taking quite a lot of that budget up. And it also shows that they are more willing to move towards that climbing setup. What is the future for a guy like Sam Bennett? Danny Van Poppel, who won today in Cologne. Um, what's his future going to be? As a sort of as a top tier leader man, is he going to go elsewhere? He only just signed last year. What's his future within the team? Like, there's plenty of guys where you think with this climbing setup, what what does the future hold? But it definitely makes sense. Um, the team already have Igita as 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 a Colombian rider who they've taken from somewhere else and they've they've given some success to. Martinez there makes complete sense to me. I think it could be a really seamless transfer and he could probably hit the ground running and win a couple UCI World Tour stage races next year. Oh think of Ineos losing another rider. They lost Adam Yates, who's very strong. Now Danny Martinez. It's like Yeah, but they also they also brought in Tim I... Adamsman and and yeah, so all but... these kids that they, that they need to look after. Well you're trying um, to feel like a tour and a Giro teams that are really strong and i mean they can still do that really yeah yeah if, i mean Egan bernal is okay, nowhere bernal, like bernal is question. nowhere if we had a fully fit bernal 100 they could they're bringing in carlos barona he's not a gc leader but we've heard he's coming in that that'll be another great helper to add to a to a to a sort of grand tour squad i think he could do really well at ineos we got thomas thomas extended yeah exactly but if you separate maybe thomas and gig and hart for the time to come, before we have a fully fit Egan Bernal. But what if they lose Carlos Rodriguez now? Then they're losing Danny Martinez. What are we down to? We're down to Leo Hater. <laughs> Uh, yeah yeah but like obviously aren't they trying to groom him to be uh, a bit more of a leader? Who's going to be working for him? All these children. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't know. It feels like in you have going through this whatever reshuffle, for re transformation, whatever the hell they called it a few years ago, and it just feels like they're kind of just gutting the team. I feel like Bora. If they got Martinez, perhaps they're sensing an opportunity. Because let's face it, there's, there's Pigatra and there's Vingegaard, who at the tour, that's first and second, barring anything catastrophic happen- happening. And it was G who finished in third place last year. Are Bora sensing an opportunity to be basically the third favourite at all times? Because they've got, like, like Hindley, of course, we'll see what he's going to be like at the tour this year, but he has seemed pretty solid over Grand Tours. I know he's, he didn't do that great as well to last year, but I feel like Bora actually looking. <laughs> I feel like Bora Hindley looking. And... Pretty... Hindley and. Hindley and. Well, oh, no. Vlasov. Vlasov, there we go. Thank you. But, <laughs> but I feel like Bora could actually take basically the place of Ineos because I feel like Ineos are just gutting the team in this transformation process but actually they're just turning to be weaker and weaker because let's face it G's not going to hang on forever like Gegenhart hasn't he been rumoured to be going somewhere he's in a contract year I swear that he's like not for certain signing with Ineos but I mean it would make sense but I don't feel like I feel like Ineos are kind of a bit uh, just a little bit stagnant whereas Bora if they sign Martinez you know, they lost Kelderman, of course, last year, and he was quite integral to Jai Hindley's success in the Giro. Perhaps they're looking for somebody to really fill in that role. Martinez, they see as being somebody really good at doing that, considering his credentials helping Bernal. I think that Bora definitely seeing an opportunity to be basically that third place on the podium at the Tour every year with a Vlasov or a Hindley or whoever. Um and I think that it makes a lot of sense, actually, you know, because then they're up against, well, like, realistically, like, David Godou, if he's in Carapaz. Paranese form. Yeah, Carapaz, exactly. I mean, Ineos have been there 2021, 2022. In the past two Pogaccia Vingo Tour de France's, or Tours de France, they've been third place, Ineos. And um, they've lost one of those guys, and one of them's getting quite old. So I guess it, it is opening up a little bit that battle for third place on the, these super teams. Whether it'll be Ineos, Bora definitely looking like a viable candidate. I think Martinez definitely fits in into that role of, of being a really solid helper for Hindley or, or Sasha Vlasov. And also having the ability to win UCI World Tour stage races elsewhere. Like he could win a... It's Zulia. He could win a... Tour of the Alps, and then so sort of go to a Grand Tour with no shame of helping Sasha Vlasov in the mountains. It could be, it could be a really, really good fit for Bora. I mean, the curse of the Tour of the Alps winners continued with Theo Gegenhardt crashing out, unfortunately. Uh, no Giro success that way. So, I mean, any riders listening, don't win the Tour of the Alps if you're going for the Giro. That's what we've learned from that. But anyway, we can't just talk about the Giro and Danny Martinez. 